Welcome back to all the stories now. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, will tomorrow, March the 23rd, arraign the immediate past head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Mrs. Winifred Oyoita, and eight others at a federal high court in Abuja. The EFCC says Mrs. Oyoita will be arraigned along with Ace Global Services Limited, Asanaya Projects Limited, Mr. Gaba Umar and his company, Slopes International Limited, among others. They will be arraigned for fraud in relation to duty tour allowances, DTA, Esther Code's conference fees fraud and receiving kickbacks on contracts. The EFCC alleges that during investigation, Mrs. Oyoita in her roles in the civil service as director, permanent secretary and head of the service used her companies as well as F. York and Umar's companies as France to receive kickbacks from contractors of various ministries and agencies where she worked. To security, gunmen have attacked some communities in Niger State, killing one mobile police officer, shooting three military men and several others. The state's police authorities told Channels Television that the gunmen rode on more than 50 motorcycles to communities where they operated for more than two hours. Although the police say the details of the incident are still sketchy, eyewitnesses told our correspondent that a little girl was shot and another man shot on the thigh, while some members of the communities have been abducted. The Nigeria Football Federation and the league management company LMC, they've described as shocking the accident involving some players of Rangers International, which led to the death of their striker and Chan Eagles International, Ifai George. George died on the spot after the vehicle he was travelling in with a teammate ran into a stationary truck along Agbo Bini Road. The player was set to be returning to Lagos to spend the break announced by the club following the suspension of the NPFL matches because of the coronavirus pandemic. He joined Rangers from AMBA in 2016 and made his Super Eagles debut in 2017. The International Olympic Committee, IOC, has given itself four weeks to decide whether or not to postpone this summer's Olympic Games in Tokyo. The IOC's executive board met on Sunday and decided to see how far the coronavirus spreads before making a final decision. The cancellation of the Games altogether has, however, been ruled out. As athletes, teams and federations call for a delay because of the virus, IOC's president admits that a postponement is under consideration, but stating that an immediate decision would be premature. The English Premier League will resume talks over the impact of the coronavirus pandemic at its next club meeting on the 3rd of April. Officials are supporting the European leagues, the body which represents more than 900 clubs in 32 professional leagues as working groups at FIFA, UEFA hold further talks in the coming week. There are indications that the EPL is tentatively shelling a plan which involves games starting from June the 1st behind closed doors, which would allow it to finish the season and in time for the start of a new one on August the 8th. The Premier League will not put any strain on the emergency services, in particular ambulances, and must adhere to the requirements of a stadium safety certificate, even for games behind closed doors. Away from sports, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says people need to use their imagination to see where government may have to go, referring to what he says may be further measures relating to social distancing and when they might be implemented. To do it, and that's always been how we've been guided. I want to thank the vast majority of people who are really behaving incredibly responsibly and uh, following the, the guidance, the advice on, on social distancing. And the, the, the difficulty, of course, is that what's happening is that some people, are either through heedlessness or, or whatever, are, are not making it easy for us because they are, as Jenny says, congregating in a way that is likely to, to spread the disease. So we have to think very carefully now about how we take steps uh, to correct that. As I've said, uh, we will be uh, thinking actively over the next few days. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The German Chancellor Angela Merkel is set to be in quarantine after meeting a doctor on Friday who has since tested positive for the virus. Mrs Merkel was told about the contact after a press conference today in which she announced further measures to try to curb the spread 
of the pandemic. The new figures were released by the John Hopkins University Center for Systems Science and Engineering. It said fresh figures reached 303,180 cases with 12,950 deaths. It took around three days for the total number to jump from 200,000 to 300,000, with over 60 countries and regions reporting cases of COVID-19 so far. Pope Francis on Sunday in his Angelus message called for worldwide prayer to respond to the coronavirus epidemic. For a couple of weeks, he has been delivering messages from inside the Vatican, as opposed to the balcony overlooking St. Peter's Square. Italy itself remains under lockdown. Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte on Saturday announced that all businesses must close until April 3rd, with the exception of those essential to maintaining the country's supply chain in the latest desperate effort to halt the spread. France has been observing its sixth day of lockdown, leaving the streets of Paris deserted. The country has reported 112 new deaths on Saturday due to the virus taking the total to 562. In China, authorities say they have received reports of 46 new confirmed cases of the coronavirus on the mainland, of which 45 were imported from abroad. The overall confirmed cases on the mainland reached 81,054, as at the end of Saturday. Meanwhile, the first batch of protective and medical equipment donated by Chinese billionaire and Alibaba co-founder Jack Ma has arrived in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa as the number of cases in Africa rise above a thousand. This uh, initiative that was brought by our, our Excellency Prime Minister Abi and in partnership with Jack Ma Foundation uh, is going to be really instrumental in uh, not only impacting our country's capacity but the whole continent's capacity uh, in detecting cases timely and also uh, enabling to contain and mitigate the outbreak because as much as you detect, that's when you can contain this outbreak. International medical charity Médecins Sans Frontières says it's setting up a 50-bed emergency centre to treat severe COVID-19 cases in Iran, which rejected aid from the United States, calling it strange. A team of nine MSF intensive care medics will staff facility on the grounds of the Amin Hospital in the central province of Isfahan, the aircraft is expected to be ready to leave at the weekend. Meanwhile, Iran has intensified its anti-epidemic efforts, including the extensive disinfection of public facilities in response to increase in number of cases in the country. The World Health Organization says it will take at least a year to develop a vaccine for the coronavirus and that countries cannot simply lock down societies to defeat the disease. Mr. Ryan says public health measures are needed to be put in place Otherwise, outbreaks of coronavirus will be commonplace when restrictions are lifted. And the main news again. Nigeria's Centre for Disease Control, NCDC, today put COVID-19 confirmed cases at 30, with 28 active cases and two discharged. Also, German Chancellor Angela Merkel today put herself into quarantine after a doctor who gave her a vaccine tested positive for COVID-19. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Have a good night.